Hey guys, my name is Scobie. Today I'm going to be showing you how to blur a face in Adobe Premiere Pro. This is going to be a nice quick and easy tutorial on screen right now. You can see a quick example. I'll also be showing you how to automatically track the face so you won't have to reset keyframes. It will automatically do everything for you. So the first thing you want to do is have a track on your timeline. As you can see, I just have this quick example track. Another one that we shot for when my friends visited. And I'm also going to be looking, as you see, when we move and scrub along our timeline, you can see the camera shakes and move a lot. And we wouldn't want to individually keyframe this for blurs. It would take a long time to do it. So we're going to be setting a blur once and we're going to let Premiere Pro automatically blur it for us. So the first thing we're going to be doing is coming to our effects window. If you can't find this, simply come up to window and go to effects. And we're going to be searching in our search box for blur. Now by doing this, we're going to be looking for our video effects and blur and sharpen. And as you can see, we have a number of different blurs here. In this case, we're going to be focusing particular on the Gaussian blur. But you can use any one of the other types of blurs that you wish. A little bit of testing will show you exactly what they look like. But I like the Gaussian blur the most. What you want to do is drag the Gaussian blur effect down onto your timeline and drop it on your video track. From here, we're going to be looking for our effects control panel. If you can't find this, simply come up to window and go to effect controls. And from here, we're going to be expanding down our Gaussian blur effect. From here, we're going to be adding a blur mask, which is going to give us a shape of how our blur should look. So in this case, we can choose an ellipse, we can choose a rectangle, or we can choose a free draw bezier, which is like a pen tool. In this case, I'm going to be focusing particularly on the ellipse mask, because I think most face shapes will work well with an ellipse. But you can use any of the other types if you wish. So we're going to be clicking our ellipse mask. And as you can see on our video preview, we have this big circle. And this is where we're going to be inserting the blur into. What you want to do is use the initial frame as your reference and we're going to be covering the face of our actual subject and blurring them and covering it to the best of our ability. So I'm going to be covering as much of him as I can without taking too much of the outside region. But we also want to leave enough that if it moves around enough, that's still going to be able to catch the whole face. So if you're making zooms and stuff, you might want to compensate for that later. But in this case, I think this size should work perfectly. From here, we're going to be coming over to our blurriness option. And we're going to be adding a small blurriness to this. So I'm going to be just adding 30 for an example, which will give us a good idea of how it should look. And you can also increase the feather if you want to make it look soft around the edges so it doesn't look sharp. But if I bring down this feather, you can see that you can tell it's a distinct sharpness around where the blur is. So you can play around with this if you want. I kind of like it when it's sharp like this. So I'm going to be leaving it with zero feather, but that's a nice option that you have. So now that we've disenabled it, if we scrub through our track, you can see that our blur is in the exact same place. So how do we get it to track an actual stay on our face subject? We're going to be going back to the original frame that we used for reference, which is for me the very first frame of this track. As you can tell, we're on zero, zero, zero right now. We're going to be making sure we have our mask selected that contains the ellipse. We're going to be clicking the forward box or the play symbol, which is going to play through the track and automatically track and reposition itself on the actual face. So I click play right now and you can see a tracking box comes up on screen and it's going to go through our track for us to add the blurring effect automatically to the face. And it's actually relatively accurate in Premiere Pro. Of course, you can go through and edit some of the keyframes manually. I'll show you how to do that after. But for right now, we're going to leave it and let it do its magic and we're going to come back to it at the very end. Okay, now that the blurring and tracking is done, we can see that if we look at our mask path, we can see a number of keyframes that show where the path is. So what we can do is go back into any of these keyframes so we can select any of these keyframes by hovering over it on our timeline and moving our mask around, which will move it for just that keyframe. So as you can tell, if we move back to the one I changed, it moves it slightly to the side. I'm going to be clicking Control and Z because I like this. So you can go back in and edit these mask keyframes at any point. So say if we scrub through our track and we notice some mistakes. So there's a couple here that it starts to slowly show some of his nose. So if we shift a couple frames forward, we can see it's slightly wrong here, so we can drag it over and manually change any of the mistakes that the keyframe made by coming through and just shifting through our timeline. And it works really, really well. The tracking is actually pretty accurate. I think the main issue with this tracking was it was trying to track the back of his head instead of the front of his head. So it's just a note that if possible, you should try have the initial frame for the tracking to be the front of a person's face rather than the side of their face because it'll try to track the hair more than the facial features itself. Anyway guys, if you enjoyed this tutorial, be sure to drop a like. Subscribe if you're new. Check out the other videos on the channel. If you want to recommend any tutorials I should make, let me know in the comments down below. If you want to watch some more Premiere Pro tutorials, I'll leave a link down below to my Premiere Pro playlist. I'm also going to leave a link down below to my PayPal if you found this video helpful and you want to support me. Of course, there's no pressure if you can't. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, as always, keep it saucy. Peace.